Laudator Jesus Christus, praised be Jesus Christ. We're coming to you live from the Sala Clementina in the Apostolic Palace. Our Holy Father is meeting a delegation from Canada. I to introduce to you the people who have come from Canada to meet you. These sisters and brothers are of various origins, Métis, Inuit and First Nations, as well as European and many others, since Canada is an immense, open, and multicultural country where the Christian faith finds good soil to bear fruit in view of building a better world. Au nom de mes frères évêques canadiens, je suis heureux de vous présenter les personnes ici présentes venues du Canada pour vous rencontrer. The President of the Canadian Conference of Catholic Bishops is greeting the Holy Father on behalf of the delegation here, Bishop Raymond Poisson. Car le Canada est un pays immense, ouvert et multiculturel, où la foi chrétienne trouve une bonne terre afin de donner son fruit en vue de construire un monde meilleur. Most Holy Father, as we all know, our recent history is marked with stigma of mistakes and failures to love our neighbor, in particular towards members of those nations who have been present in Canada for centuries. Our desire for reconciliation is all the greater. Our presence here is a testimony to our commitment for one another and to each other. Saint Catherine de Caquita, an emblematic saint of the Church in Canada, accompanies us in our pilgrimage to the Sea of St. Peter. Apparently, she liked to say, who will teach me what is most pleasing to God so that I may do it? We have therefore come to you, Most Holy Father, people of America, of First Nation, Métis, Inuit, as well as European descent, and so many others, to learn from you what is more pleasing to God in order to accomplish it while walking together on a path of reconciliation. Holy Father, your warm welcome as pastor of the Universal Church is particularly important for all Canadians on this road of reconciliation. Your words laden with appeals to mercy and reminders of God's tenderness encourage us in our work of reconciliation. While St. Catherine invites us to take a path of authenticity and humility together, there is an intimate joy to know that you, Holy Father, are walking with us on this path. 
your positive reply to the invitation of your sons and brothers, Bishop of Canada, to visit our country warms the hearts of the Canadian faithful. It is almost as if we are ready today to help you pack your bags. We are filled by the desire to walk together, no matter who we are, our origins or our culture, and by the knowledge that you, Most Holy Father, as pastor of the Universal Church, will remind us of what is the most pleasing to God so that we can accomplish it together. Merci, Très Saint Père, pour la générosité avec laquelle vous avez rencontré chacun des groupes ici représentés. Avec gratitude et joie, nous sommes heureux de conclure aujourd'hui avec vous dans la prière cette visitation. Thank you, Most Holy Father, for generously meeting with each of these groups here present. It is in prayer with gratitude and joy that we conclude this visit with you today. And thank you for all your blessing. Merci, très saint -Père. The greeting of the Canadian, the, the president of the Canadian Conference of Catholic Bishops after a series of meetings this week between the First Nations people of Canada and the Holy Father. My name is Sister Bernadette. I'm joined today by Deacon Pedro Guevara Mann from Salt and Light Media. We move forward with the program. Thank you, Sister Bernadette. It's a pleasure to be here as we conclude this very historic and meaningful week. And so we begin with uh, opening prayers led by each uh, representatives from each of the delegations. Starting with a representative from the uh, Assembly of First Nations, representing some 600 nations across the country, and uh, traveling with them was our spiritual advisor, Fred Kelly. I come before you humbly, respectfully, invoking the blessings of the Creator, the Great Spirit. And today, I thank the organizers of this expedition to come to you, Your Holiness, for me to ask you again to join me in prayer so we can start our deliberations and our discussions. I have asked the privilege of holding the pipe to the eastern direction, to the other direction of the south, to the west, and to the north where the spirits that the Creator has placed in these four directions to guide us, that we may live in peace and harmony with all peoples of the East, the Yellows, the Blacks to the South, the Reds to the West where we come from, and whence you also come from, Your Holiness, the beautiful island that we know as Turtle Island. I also point the pipe, the Calumet, sacred Calumet, to the north, whence the white bear sits in fierce protection of its children. And we come to you because our ancestors taught us to love our children. And the present generation is here in protection of their own children in the future. So I ask you to pray with me in thought, even though we speak in different languages. It is the spirit of our prayers that are important, not so much the words that we speak. Your Holiness, you understand what I'm talking about. And so I ask, 
Dear Creator, we ask you, we ask you and implore upon you the sacred gifts, the sacred laws of our peoples that we know as Gajewatazuin, love, kindness, sharing, respect, truth, courage, and humility. May we have the blessings of these gifts from the Holy Creator, the one God that all of us refer to in our different languages and our different spiritualities and our different ways in which we speak, to that one God that we know as the Creator in each and our own languages. Holy Father, may the Creator, the Great Spirit, bless us today as we meet, that we can walk into the future aware that we must allow and follow the seven laws of creation. And so, that we can live not only in peace and harmony, but in the meantime, that we can find that, that reconciliation and the healing that our present generations need, and that our missing and murdered women will also be found and, and saved. May the grandmother that has re-embraced the remains of our loved ones who have gone to the spirit world, having attended the residential schools. May our children who have been taken away from us be returned to our people, the lovely parents. And may we find that peace and comfort to be with you in the future as brother and sister. Dear Creator, Great Spirit, Bless us. Show you the mission of Gishay Manito. We got your holiness. Words of the opening prayer by the spiritual advisor who traveled with the delegation of the Santo Assembly Padre, of First Nations, I Elder Fred I Kelly. I invite now from the Métis, Elder Emil Janvier. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to say a prayer in my Dene language. At home, we should have a good job. 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 We should have a it's only Janok. Senut Alus Hul Yehu and Nathan who daily die in mercy nor his case. Mercy, a tobe is true, the iron is not true, it does turn death. Santo Padre, I invite now. From the Inuit, Marty and Lizzie, Angouti Aluk, it's for the Pater Noster. And we just heard uh, the words of prayer in Dene Michi from the elder Emile Janvier, who traveled with the Metis delegation. And as uh, Monsignor Poisson uh, just said, we will now listen to the words of the. Uh, our Father in Inuktitut. <laughs> Ta 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 Yeah. 
of the Our Father, sung by Marty Angotelouk and Lizzie Angotelouk, members of the Inuit delegation. Now we await the words of our Holy Father in response not only to what we have heard in these last few minutes, but to the three audiences granted to the Matisse Nation, the Inuit, and the Assembly of First Nation peoples. Dear brothers and sisters, Good morning and welcome. I thank Bishop Poisson for his kind words and each of you for your presence here and for the prayers you have offered to heaven. I'm grateful that you have come to Rome despite the difficulties caused by the pandemic. Over the past days, I have listened attentively to your testimonies. I have brought them to my thoughts and prayers, reflecting on the stories you told and the situations you described. I thank you for having opened your hearts to me and for expressing by means of this visit your desire for us to journey together. I would like to take up a few of the many things that have struck me let me start by saying that it is part of your traditional wisdom. It is not only a turn of phrase, but also a view of living. In every deliberation, we must consider the impact on the seventh generation. These are wise words, far-sighted, and the exact opposite of what often happens in our day. When we run after practical and immediate goals without thinking of the future and generations yet to come, instead, the ties that connect the elderly and the young are essential. They must be cherished and protected lest we lose our historical memory and very identity. They must be cherished and protected for whenever memory and identity are cherished and protected, we become more human. In these days, a beautiful image kept coming up. You compared yourselves to the branches of a tree. Like those branches, you have spread in different directions. You have experienced various times and seasons, and you have been buffeted by powerful winds, yet you have remained solidly anchored to your roots, which you kept strong. In this way, you've continued to bear fruit, for the branches of a tree grow high only if its roots are deep. I would like to speak of some of those fruits, which deserve to be better known and appreciated. First, your care for the land, which you see not as a resource to be exploited, but as a gift from heaven. 
Ed è uno spazio vitale nel quale cogliere la propria esistenza all'interno. For you the land preserves the memory of your ancestors who rest there. It is a vital setting making it possible to see each individual's life as part of a greater web of relationships with the creator, with the human community, with all living species and with the earth, our common home. All this leads you to seek interior and exterior harmony, to show great love for the family and to possess a lively sense of community. Then, too, there are the particular riches of your languages, your cultures, your traditions and your forms of art. These represent a patrimony that belongs not only to you, but to all humanity, for they are expressions of our common humanity. And yet, that tree, rich in fruit, has experienced a tragedy that you described to me in these past days the tragedy of being uprooted. The chain that passed on knowledge and ways of life in union with the land was broken by a colonialization that lacked respect for you, tore many of you from your vital milieu and tried to conform you to another mentality. In this way, great harm was done to your identity and your culture. Many families were separated, and great numbers of children fell victim to these attempts to impose a uniformity based on the notion that progress occurs through ideological colonization, following programs devised in offices, rather than the desire to respect the life of peoples. This is something that unfortunately and at various levels still happens today, that is ideological colonization. How many forms of political, ideological and economic colonization still exists in the world today, driven by greed and thirst for profit with little concern for peoples, their histories and traditions and the common home of creation, sadly. This colonial mentality remains widespread. Let us help each other together to overcome it. Listening to your voices, I was able to enter into and be deeply grieved by the stories of the suffering, hardship, discrimination, and various forms of abuse that some of you experienced particularly in the residential schools. It's chilling to think of determined efforts to instill a sense of inferiority, to rob people of their cultural identity, to sever their roots, and to consider all the personal and social efforts that this continues to entail unresolved traumas that have become intergenerational traumas. All this made me feel two things very strongly, indignation and shame. Indignation because it is not right to accept evil, and even worse, to grow accustomed to evil, as if it were an inevitable part of the historical process. No. Without real indignation, without historical memory, and without a commitment to learning from past mistakes, problems remain unresolved and keep coming back. We can see it these days in the case of war. The memory of the past must never be sacrificed at the altar of alleged progress. I also feel shame, I'm saying it now and I'm repeating it, sorrow and shame for the role that a number of Catholics, particularly those with educational responsibilities, have had in all these things that wounded you, in the abuses you suffered, and in the lack of respect shown for your identity, your culture, and even your spiritual values. All these things are contrary to the gospel of Jesus Christ. For the deplorable conduct of these members of the Catholic Church, 
e vorrei dirvi di tutto cuore, sono molto addolorato. E mi unisco ai fratelli vescovi canadesi. I ask for God's forgiveness, and I want to say to you with all my heart, I am very sorry, and I join my brothers, the Canadian bishops, in asking your pardon. Clearly, the content of the faith cannot be transmitted in a way contrary to the faith itself. Jesus taught us to welcome love, serve, and not judge. It is frightening. It is a frightening thing, then, when precisely in the name of the faith, counter-witness is rendered to the gospel. Che il Creatore rivolge all'umanità l'inizio della Bibbia. Da prima, dopo la colpa commessa, chiede all'uomo, dove sei? Your experiences have made me ponder anew these ever-timely questions that the Creator addresses to mankind in the first pages of the Bible. After the first sin, he asks, where are you? Then a few pages later, he asks another question inseparable from the first. Where is your brother? Where are you? Where is your brother? These are questions we should never stop asking. They are the essential questions raised by our conscience, lest we ever forget that we are here on this earth as guardians of the sacredness of life, and thus guardians of our brothers and sisters and of all brother peoples. At the same time, I think with gratitude of all those good and decent believers who in the name of the faith and with respect, love and kindness have enriched your history with the gospel. I think with joy, for example, of the great veneration that many of you have for St. Anne, the grandmother of Jesus, and I hope to be, to be with you that day. Nowadays, we need to reestablish the covenant between grandparents and grandchildren, between the elderly and the young. We need to reestablish the covenant between grandparents and grandchildren, between the elderly and the young, for this is a fundamental prerequisite for the growth of unity in our human family. Dear brothers and sisters, it is my hope that our meetings in these days will point out new paths to be pursued together, instill courage and strength, and lead to greater commitment on the local level. Any truly effective process of healing requires concrete actions. In a fraternal spirit, I encourage the bishops and the Catholic community to continue taking steps towards the transparent search for truth and to foster healing and reconciliation. These steps are part of a journey that can favor the rediscovery and revitalization of your culture while helping the Church to grow in love, respect, and specific attention to your authentic traditions. I wish to tell you that the Church stands beside you and wants to continue journeying with you. Dialogue is the key to knowledge and sharing, and the bishops of Canada have clearly stated their commitment to continue advancing together with you on a renewed, constructive, fruitful path where encounters and shared projects will be of great help. Dear friends, I have been enriched by your words and even more by your testimonies. You have brought here to Rome a living sense of your communities. I will be happy to benefit again from meeting you when I visit your native lands where your families live. I'm not going to go in winter, eh? So I will close by saying until we meet again in Canada, where I will be able better to express to you my closeness. In the meantime, I assure you of my prayers and upon you, your families and your communities, I invoke the blessing of the Creator. Thank you. And I'd like to finish. I, I don't want to finish without saying a word to you, Brother Bishops. Thank you. Thank you for your courage. Thank you.
and humility. The Spirit of the Lord is revealed in humility. Before history, like we've heard, the humiliation of the church is fruitfulness. It's fruitful. Thank you for your courage. And thank you to all of you. Those powerful words from Pope Francis, words that were expected by a lot of people. He said that for the deplorable conduct of those members of the Catholic Church, I ask for God's forgiveness. I am very sorry. And now, uh, Monsignor Poisson is uh, inviting uh, all the delegates to share their cultural expressions with the Holy Father. The first one will be a, a drummer that traveled with the Inuit delegation, David David Serkwak. Good Inuit. Good day, Inuit. My name is David Serkwak. I'm very glad to be here in Rome. Thank you. I'm about to share something that is passed on to me from my parents, and I also come from lines of singers and drummers back in, uh, in 50s and 40s and 30s, when my late father composed a song of Bihir. I hope the sound system will be able to pick it up for me to uh, use it in a few minutes. When a man in my group reached a maturity, one of the things that he has to do is compose a song or bihir. It's, it's not a simple song. It's a journey, a trip of many, many. And that special journey, that special hunting trip becomes a song. And this song, or Bihik, I'm about to share with you this morning or today, is composed by my late father, Miki. How songs or Bihik pass on in family circle, sometimes to even strangers. But for my group, after he passed away, his song still lives. Two of my grandsons named after him, Miki and Ulayu, they are the owners of that song that I'm about to share with you. So I hope the sound system will pick it up Without further ado, I like to demonstrate drum dancing.
Inuit drummer David Serkwak sharing a meaningful song with the group that is gathered here with Pope Francis. Uh, it's important for the delegations. I invite the group of the Limitis. I invite Brianna Lizotte and Alexander Lamoureux for a fiddle music. It's very important for the delegates to share their cultures because part of the legacy of the residential schools was to take away the, their languages and cultures. And now uh, Alex Lamoureux and Brianna Marie Lissot, Métis fiddlers, will share their music. Métis fiddlers Alex Lamoureux and Brianna Lissot representing that joyful music that is so uh, important for the Métis Nation. And the third group will be the group from the Assembly of First Nations. Kevin Scott will be doing a, what is called the Fancy Dance and uh, he will be accompanied by Melissa Fox singing a song titled Sky World. It's 
the Assembly of First Nations is the largest delegation. Um, they represent some 600 nations across Canada. And this is but a taste of what all those nations contribute culturally. Tony Clark, you're on the air. Straight song, straight song, straight song. Got that. you listening through radio the First Nations dancer dressed in bright yellows and red with adorned in feathers with a shield being accompanied by a traditional First Nations song Kevin Scott is performing what is called a fancy dance, which is loosely based on a war dance, but a very popular and colorful dance uh, that is seen at powwows all year long throughout North America. It is not a dance that belongs to any particular nation, but is shared among many. Throughout the week, our Holy Father has been given gifts, among them a pair of moccasins, some snowshoes. I, I believe that he actually received two pairs of moccasins, snowshoes, uh, various gifts, uh, rosaries, uh, letters from written by survivors from across the country as well, many mementos that I'm sure the Holy Father will treasure. We know that at the end of this audience, we want to give you some gifts. So representatives from each gift would like to give you an official gift from the group to you. And after, we think that there will be other people who will be receiving something from your holiness. And now I invite gift, an official gift from the First Nation, Linda Daniels and Adrienne Gunner. Linda Daniels and Adrienne Gunner. And now our Holy Father to receive other gifts 
by these First Nations people who want to share their culture with someone that they consider to be a father. And Linda Daniels and Adrian Gunner from the Assembly of First Nations delegation will be presenting a pair of snowshoes to the Holy Father as well as a a beaded leather stole, which is a liturgical vestment um, that was handcrafted by a First Nations artist. The snow shoots are made of black ash and caribou sinew and are made by Elder Sanders Weich from the Cree community of Wescan Nagish in Quebec. Unfortunately, we're not able to hear the words uh, that uh, the delegate is speaking to the Holy Father. Exchange a handshake right now. The next delegation now, oh, the same delegation presenting the stole. And the stole is being presented by uh, Phil Fontaine, former Grand Chief of the Assembly of First Nations. And this is a, a stole that is beaded with orange crosses, and it was crafted by Therese Det Detanikesi from the Northlands Tenesulene Nation in Manitoba. And uh, followed by the Metis delegation, who will be presenting the Holy Father with their gift. Oh, the Inuit delegation, pardon me, is presenting the Holy Father with a cross and a pouch. And again, we can't hear what she's saying, but she, we know that the cross was made from the baleen of a bowhead whale. Um, it's riveted to sterling silver with 18 karat gold, and the pouch is sewn by hand and made from seal skin and uh, finished with an ivory button. We can see it there on the screen. Traditional elements that are used by the Inuit, not just for survival, but also to create beautiful, In the name of beautiful the crafts. I invited President Caron, Elder Crerard, Elder Janvier. And the Inuit gift was presented to the Holy Father by Rosemary Lundrigan. President Cassidy Karen, President of the Métis Nation, the Métis National Council, is speaking with the Holy Father and presenting him with a very, very meaningful gift. It's a book of memories that they put together. I know they personally know that they've been spending months compiling this book, stories from across the nation. And it, it includes stories from Métis survivors and a letter, a personal letter from President Karen to Pope Francis. Our Holy Father now warmly greeting the delegation. And to receive from the Holy Father an official gift, I invite from the First Nation, have the name of Adeline Weber and Taylor Tsakosa Ben. It's significant. Uh, it's significant that there are youth participants in the delegations. The focus has been on the elders, but uh, Taylor Sakosa Ben is one of the youth delegates, and I think it's very symbolic that she's the one receiving the gift from the Holy Father. In the name of the Inuit, I'm invited Rosemary Londrigan. The gift is being given in a, a white box. It is open, but uh, oh, it looks like a plant. The gift that is being received to the delegates uh, from the Holy Father is a bronze olive branch. And in the name it's a sign of, of peace and reconciliation, and it, it, it is given the by the Holy Gerard Father to all, all the delegations. and now receiving the gift 
for the Métis Nation is, again, President Cassidy Caron. The representative of the youth spoke yesterday at the briefing very eloquently about the desire to know the history of what has happened to her peoples without passing on any anything other than that story, uh, other than reconciliation and healing. And on behalf of everyone, the President of the Canadian Bishops Conference asking for the, Lord, for the Holy Father to impart his blessing. God bless you all the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Pray for me, don't forget. I'll pray for you. Thank you very much for your visit. Bye-bye. Our Holy Father finishing his audience today in English. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. This has been an historic visit with the First Nations people of Canada seeking to partner with the church on their journey of healing and reconciliation. And the Holy Father being given one more gift. It also looks like a handcrafted stole from one of the delegations. Um, Sister Bernadette, it has been not just a historic week, but a very emotional, emotional week that is just the beginning of a long road of journey, healing, reconciliation, and justice. And one that we heard today will continue in Canada. We will, we will, and the dates, those dates will be announced shortly, I am, I am sure. We're looking forward to that. Before we conclude, I would like to thank all of the other channels who have transmitted, broadcast this, so that all of you could participate in this historic moment and that we too may join with our brothers and sisters in this search and journey for healing and reconciliation to all of you joining us through Salt and Light Media, Catholic Faith Network, Shalom World TV at Madarshan TV, EWTN, Catholic TV, Luminous Radio, and Radio Maria in Papua New Guinea. As we know, our Holy Father begins a trip to Malta. We invite you back on Saturday morning where you will be able to participate in his first meeting with the authorities in that country. On behalf of Vatican Media, I'd like to thank all of the technicians who've made this possible, but special thanks to Deacon Pedro. It's been a great pleasure on behalf of all of us at Salt and Light Media. Sister Bernadette, thank you for, uh, it was a joy to participate in this with you today. Thank No matter what